Any questions so far? So are we allowed to focus on like, the users of the digital media, or are we allowed to focus on the digital media itself? Most texts generally will show both. So I haven't made a, a firm rule that you need to look at users, settings, and implications in line with the unit's title or anything like that. But if you've got, for example, you looked at a scene from Gamer last week, you've had both technology uh, and the meanings generated around that, but also a very strong stereotype of certain users. So for sure, you can talk about digital media users uh, as well as technology. But um, you, you'll probably seldom find examples that have only got one. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, just quickly, I think it might have been in the um, assignment guidelines. And I believe it's what you were sort of referring to before in terms of examining the intersection between content and form yep. techniques. Is that? Mm -hmm. So that's including like camera techniques if they do you know, zooming in or yep. that kind of thing? Well. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. The content form is another way of, of saying, you know, kind of what a text is saying and yes. how it's saying it. Do we need a description of the movie in our essay? Do you need a description of the movie in your essay? I make the point, and I think I do this in my, my chapter on ideology and meaning in film, that a good analysis always describes or explains at the same time. So how long would you need to describe or explain or summarise the plot of a film? How many sentences? No, maybe like 50 words. Yeah, absolute max. One sentence should do it. You, don't, you only need to tell me as much as I need to know to understand your analysis. So it, whether or not we've seen it doesn't matter. But if you watch, if you read my example on The Condemned, you actually know enough about that scene just from what I've said without needing to know more. So that's really key. And maybe, maybe getting someone to read it who is not involved in the unit could be a good way of checking that. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, that, that applies to all writing in general. You always ask, do you understand what I'm saying? If the answer is yes, if they maybe need a bit more detail, I don't know what you mean by that. But when you, when, you, when you bring filmic techniques and conventions, and they apply, I should also say, when you bring film conventions into a, a, an analysis of a film, and they also apply to TV shows, you know, camera angles, that kind of thing, uh, and games these days, I mean, the cinematics and the aesthetics of games and the opening, as we saw last week, I mean, film analysis can actually be very useful. When you bring techniques into an analysis, it doesn't mean that you're not saying anything about the text. You can't just list techniques, and that's really important not to just list stuff. You have to, when you say something about a technique, you need to explain. Sorry, this is a bit of a roundabout, I'll come back to your question. You need to explain the significance and the meaning that it's generating. Um, how, the, how the how, the technique, the convention, the strategy of the film or the text is contributing to the what, what's it saying. But in relation to that, when you're doing your analysis, you're not saying nothing about the text. You're actually finding a strategic way of explaining what's happening. So through the, through the rapid editing of the scene involving blah, blah, these characters chasing this character, you're actually telling me these characters are chasing this character in that way. Yeah. So a good, the summary is a good analysis always explains and you get better at that. That's maybe that's that might be hard to do at the start, but you're in a sense you're always doing both. But the plot, the plot summary. I mean, you read most movie reviews don't comment too much on production values and techniques. They don't talk about the how. And even if they do, even if a movie review talks about the how, even if a movie review talks about the cinematography, they're never commenting on how that cinematography is impacting on the meanings conveyed. They're just saying. That shot was freaking awesome. Or David Stratton saying, I don't usually like 3D cinema, but you know, this, this movie wasn't too bad. Four stars. So movie reviews don't look at what analysis does, and that's the intersection between the what's it saying and the how's it saying it. So hopefully that explains that. But you know, one sentence summary in your intro, you know, uh, the following analysis of the condemned, uh, which depicts a uh, evil entrepreneur setting up a, a literal panopticon or you know, surveillance island uh, in order to torture and to murder criminals. That kind of that tells me the plot summary without mentioning that Steve Austin's in the film. You've done movies of the week and stuff yep. throughout. Are you going to be disappointed if we use one of those? 
I will be thrilled if you've been watching the movies of the week. Yeah, because <laughs> I watched off. one of them and yeah. I loved it, and it, I would be more than happy to write about it. That's okay. I'm not going to be like, oh, she's taking the easy route. No, 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 it's okay. not the easy route. I mean, the, 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 the easy route would be me not doing them because they take 45 minutes sometimes to do a minute. Yeah. <laughs> because of, I'm not very good at talking quickly. Um, but yes, absolutely. If you want to do one of the movies of the week, that is fine. Uh, the only couple that you wouldn't be able to do is sort of a joke one that I put into New Media and the Law, I think. One was uh, To Kill a Mocking, To Catch a Mockingbird, To Kill a Mockingbird, and the other one was Twelve Angry Men. I mean, I put those in there just as a joke about other ones, but absolutely any of the others. I wasn't analysing them. Yeah. I was just, the, the whole point of the movies of the week, and I didn't do this last year. Last year's uh, performance with this module exercise is the reason why I did Movies of the Week this year. Yeah. To get people thinking from an early stage, what, is a, what am I exposed to on an almost weekly basis? I mean, I went to the cinema twice over the weekend. You think, oh, I should have been marking my son, mate. I need a break too. <laughs> but there's so much. There's so much out there at the moment, even what's on there at the moment. Don't, don't suggest you go to the cinema. I, I've, Analyze films in a cinema with my laptop and read a journal articles, but I, you know you have to go a few times. The only text you cannot use is a list of five, maybe six texts in the instructions document in one of the points. That's all. You just discussed uh, briefly about talking about scenes. Is it possible to just analyze like a certain scene or sequence from a film, or do you have to do the <coughs> entirety of the film? You couldn't can't comprehensively cover anything. I've recommended in the instructions that you know, three, maybe four scenes would be more than enough. It's risky to try and comprehensively cover a whole text, whether it be a whole film or anything. So I, I've actually recommended in, at one point the instructions is, if you're doing a film, think three, maybe four scenes. And even the same with a TV episode. And what I would note, I think I might mention this last week, my example is on The Condemned. Steve Austin plays the main character in The Condemned. You know Steve Austin? He's an Oscar-worthy actor. Where's not. <sighs> That's exactly right. But, I, do you remember me talking about him? I can't even remember his character name. I don't mention him until the conclusion, and it's only a passing reference. He's the main character, and I left him out, because I didn't need him. I'm not suggesting you should do that. Most of the time, you probably need to talk about the main character, because that's who you're positioned to identify with. But there's so much in this film, in this kind of ordinary, not so fantastic B grade, maybe between B and A grade, probably more B grade film. Steve Austin, the main character, was not essential to my 1200 word essay. But if you, when you read that example, you might have thought, okay, that offers a close analysis of surveillance and the contempt. I actually didn't need to go there. So that was a 1200 word analysis. I could have gone a lot further. And I, I plan to, I hope to, I hope to turn this into a journal article just on the condemned, and it will still be frustrating. Even if it's a 10,000 word journal article, I won't be able to say everything that I can. Everything that I want to about film. So, great question. Yeah. Be selective, and you've got to decide. You can find a dozen parts of a text that you think are absolutely brilliant, but you've got to be the one who judges. What's most interesting, significant? What allows me to say something that I want to, and that will build up my argument? and you might have to leave stuff out. To choose your important scenes, and you'll have to cut out more. You'll always have to cut out more than you want to. And you want to choose what's most important, significant, and interesting for you to make a point about. A really useful way of analyzing a film and making sure that you think about how the meaning has been generated is to, one, shut your eyes and just listen, and then go back and turn the sound off and watch the scene. And it actually denaturalizes the filmmaking process a bit for you. If you don't do this kind of thing very often, I'm not suggesting you do that in the cinema or anything, but you actually get naturally good at it. Um, if you just listen or just watch, you see what's going on and you hear what's going on all gone better. And that really reinforces another major point that I think I, I'm making my reading from last week, the remote control is your best friend. Rewatching, whether it's the scene, you don't have to watch the whole film four or five times, or the whole episode ten times. But you need to have an idea of context, you need to know how the scenes fit in, otherwise it becomes very clear in an analysis when you don't. But rewatching is really important, rereading. 
and you get more, we're going to do that today, you get more out of it the more you do. Uh, you always get more out of it. A 1200 word essay sounds like a lot less than what you've done previously. A five minute video, you know how many hours that took to get the footage, to compile it, to put it together, to edit, to publish from your program, to upload it. A 1200 word essay sounds simple compared to that. Plus you had the 600 word critical reflection in your blog post. All of that though was worth 40%. Your 1200 word essay is worth 30%. So consider that. Very, still very important, very substantial. But the reasons I did Moves of the Week is because last year, and even this year, I asked people, just let's just go around the circle, just say one text. Game, book, movie, film, pod, I, don't, I don't care what it is, that represents digital media in some way. And people struggle in each seminar I've had, which is significant because it shows how naturalised representations of digital media are. When I, when I saw You've Got Mail as a kid, that was weird. But people struggle. Um, so it's kind of bizarre, when you, once you start this, I hope after you do this module exercise, when you go to the movies, you will see things and you're like, that was an interesting depiction of the way a mobile phone is used. That was a bit of a stereotypical representation of gamers. And you'll see that. You'll see that. That's part of the point. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to talk to you anymore. Have a good week. Hi everyone, just a quick intro this week, and that's not only because I have a brand new game I need to find some shelf space for. In fact, <laughs> really, when Steve Austin's in a film, do you really want to mention it? The, loud, the laughter needed to be louder for me to use that joke in the video, but nevertheless. <laughs> ah, my laugh track. <laughs> yeah, I might use that now.